I know how to stream and I love being able to know how to stream and doing stream stuff. I've been doing this for years and as a result, I'm an expert. It's not at all hard to wrap my head around. <clears throat> okay. All right. Here's what we're going to do. Uh, we're going to we're going to see if I'm streaming here. Hi. Hello. Yo. Wonderful. Great. It's it, they're they're coming in. Um okay, so we're going to look at some some questions about art. And uh, I'm going to I'm going to I'm going to give you my opinions off the top, off the dome. And uh, I don't know how to keep this thing up. This uh, this little chat window over here up while minimizing the other one. So you know what? Maybe that's fine. Maybe that's all right. Maybe maybe that maybe that's not really a problem. Maybe I don't have to get distracted by the chat. I mean, this is going to be hard enough just just reading 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 words. Okay. How has your growth as an artist affected your enjoyment of others' art? Do you ever experience moments where enjoying art feels difficult and or impossible? And if so, how do you overcome that feeling? Uh, yeah, so when I'm experiencing art um, from somebody who is doing something that I wish I was doing, I have a strong desire to destroy them, to burn them to the ground. Uh, it's called negative fuel, bad fuel in the tank. Uh, you can't run your car on bad fuel or else you will. Uh, you'll break your car. <laughs> your car will break down. So you need to find some stuff that's different. Well, I, I had to find some stuff that was different enough from what I would be doing um, in some way. So for example, uh, I like this Iranian filmmaker who makes very confessional style art that I wouldn't make because it's so hyper honest and he's also like 60 years old. Um, it's so in your face hyper honest um, that it's, it's like pretty impressive. And he's not playing a character at all. He doesn't do any subterfuge at all. And I, I respect it a lot. It's some of my favorite art. Um, but there's so much distance between me and the art. Like, you know, he's, he's a 60-year-old guy. Um, but then there's also a lot that I get out of it because he was kind of like, in a way, the, the first flogger because he was the guy who was recording his life before people had cameras, um, before people had, like, phone cameras and stuff. Um, but it's a good question. Um, it, it, it can be difficult to like people uh, if there's an element of uh, jealousy at play, right? If they're doing something that you wish, you say, God, I wish that was me. I wish I could make art that good. And this is a very common thing among artists as well. Like even successful artists, you know, everyone's got their guy who's like, ah. It's like some, often it's someone like niche too. It's like someone that's smaller than them. If you're asking like a successful artist this, like who's your favorite artist? It's some niche guy you've never heard of. And the guy's like, God, I wish that was me. And meanwhile, a bunch of other people are looking at that artist and saying, God, I wish that was me. And you've got a big hierarchical you know, structure there. Um, how do you overcome that feeling? Yeah, <laughs> this is going to be a theme. Uh, I hope you I hope you like feeling things because you're going to have to deal with that a lot in your life. I don't think I'm naturally an artist, but I admire artists so much that I want to become one. Is this a valid approach? Any advice? Um, let me just hold on. Is this is this working? OBS OBS wise, are we? Is this working over here? Um, yeah. All right. Probably good enough. Probably, probably good enough. Um, okay. I don't think I'm naturally an artist, but I admire artists so much that I want to become one. Is this a valid approach? Any advice? Um, hmm, I have to. This is this is this is putting me in an interesting spot because I'm basically I have to gun to my head. Are you not, are, can people naturally be artists? Is it nur nature or nurture? Truthfully, I don't know. Um, it sounds like this person is sort of a, uh, um, like, they like, ident they want to identify as an artist because they like the vibe. Uh, you know, here's, here, 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 here's, maybe I'll answer this with another, like, thought. Uh, I really like, um, I really respect cartoon, like like visual artists. Um, I really respect people who can like draw. I can't draw very well. I'm not a good visual artist. I've never had a lot of visual art talent. I'm trying to make myself draw better and even develop my own kind of scratchy style. Uh, I got a tablet and I'm working on that. I'm not a good, particularly talented visual artist, uh, but I, I respect them a lot. And you know, I really like the idea of being able to sketch somebody on demand. 
No, I, I don't know if I, it's ever going to happen for me. I, I don't. I don't. I think it's probably not going to happen for me, and that's okay because you can't be good at everything. Uh, <laughs> now, in the broad sense, um, maybe a better example would be like, do I admire? I mean, I have a friend who works in landscaping, and I admire um, the kinds of like things that he can make happen uh, in the physical world, but would I ever be able to do that? Probably not, and I know myself well enough at this point to say, yeah, probably not. Um, but, you know, here, here, here's my problem, okay, let me just, let me just blow, the, blow the question apart. I, I admire artists so much that I want to become one. So, how do you become an artist? Tell me. How do you become an artist? You make art, right? Um, so, an artist is someone who makes art. An artist is not someone, hot take, who thinks about making art. <laughs> so, um, if, you wanna, if you wanna see if this is something that would work for you, you make art. That's the only practical piece of advice you can ever really give somebody. <laughs> make art, and then you'll know, and then you'll know. Um, wow, look at this, wow. Uh, there you go. <laughs> um, and you'll notice that the more you think about art, the more of like this answer, just being the only answer, is uh, it's, it's not really fair to say because there are some, there is a lot of difficulty in, 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 in terms of making art, especially when you're alone, you know, you don't have an artistic community around you. Um, that's being, like a lot of what I'm trying to figure out is how do you be an artist when you're totally atomized, you know? You don't need, you don't need friends. You know, you know, of, um, you know, have a community of people around you to make art with. And uh, you can find those kinds of people and you can make those kinds of communities, but it's hard. And the vast majority of people are starting from a position of complete atomization and maybe even continuing from a place of complete atomization. So it's tough, it's tough. And um, there is some stuff worth thinking about and that's why, you know, I wanna, that's why these questions are worth engaging with. Uh, what's your relationship with mediums that don't have any semantic content, like abstract paintings or purely instrumental music? Do you consider these kinds of works to be more art or artisanship? Yeah, that's a good question. Uh, I, I mean, so I'll say like abstract paintings, art, I would say. Purely instrumental music, art, I would say. There is a, um, there is an art to it. You know, I have a friend who makes instrumental music, and he says he can like, you know. He really feels the artist communicate their emotions through the instrumental music. Now, I have a spoken word background. I have like a lyrical background. So I get my, you know, satisfaction out of music a lot of the time just through the lyrics. But I, I recognize most people even sometimes get their, get, get, the, <laughs> get their meaning through just, just the instrumental. And I don't, I don't necessarily, like I'm not 100% vibing with that, but... I, I understand it, you know, like um, they they are having an artistic com like experience without it having any words. And it's, it's the same thing can be said with abstract paintings. So, I mean, does like the abstract painting need to have a specific meaning that the artist intended for it to be art? And the answer is uh, probably not, probably not. But maybe I'm wrong, maybe I'm wrong. Um, with AI art, it appears that the survival of art will have to pass by understanding that art is the act of creation itself, not in its commodification. The only future for art is all of us becoming artists. Doesn't it seem impossible? Thoughts on that? Uh, I gotta unpack that one. Okay. Uh, AI questions. I love, I love talking about robots. Uh, I'm gonna come out as a robophobe eventually and just smash all the machines. But until then, it appears that the survival of art will have to pass by the understanding that art is in the act of creation itself. Okay. So, Uh, yeah, I mean, the, uh, the person who draws Mario, you know, in a nurse's costume is, is probably going to be out of work because AI will be able to, you punch in Mario in nurse's costume. So the, the art is the act of, of making the art, is the argument. Um, the only future for art is by all of us becoming artists. Doesn't it seem impossible? Doesn't it seem impossible? Um, the only future for art is all of us becoming artists. I don't think I understand the argument well enough to engage with this one, so I'm going to keep going. How do you decide on which mediums to incorporate and combine? Do you feel like you've created a new medium of art? 
Bonus question. How do you plan on guiding the revolt against the AI singularity and its consequences? <laughs> okay, let's, let's tackle this one at a time. How do you decide on which mediums to incorporate and combine? Um, I don't really consciously do it. It's more of like, if you, if you have a bunch of tools in your toolbox, you know, if you, learn, if you learn how to draw, this is why I was trying to learn how to draw. If you learn how to draw, you, you put that tool in your toolbox, right? And then you learn how to uh, sing, you know, put that tool in your toolbox. And then you learn how to, uh, I don't know, write a poem, <laughs> tool in a toolbox. And then you learn how to communicate effectively, tool in a toolbox. So then you have a bunch of tools in your toolbox. So I'm never like, I, ha I have to combine this screwdriver with this wrench. It's more like I have a problem that needs solving. Ah, look at this. I've got a screwdriver and a wrench. Ba 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 ba. So the problem that needs solving is the idea that I have. I have an idea. What's a specific example I can give you? Um, let's say for I'm Gonna Snap. That's a recent music video I did. Uh, the production quality on that one was much higher than I normally do. So it's artistically satisfying to see because there's multiple camera angles and the shots are nice. And I don't normally make art like that. I make it from like one angle, one, one shot, green screen behind me, and then I do all the editing and blah, blah, blah. So I, I did something different and it was artistically satisfying. Um, so the medium I was combining there was filmmaking, fil filmography, uh, with my normal stuff. I'm not, I'm not a good filmographer. I'm not very particularly good at getting good shots. Some people are very good at that. I'm not very good at that. Um, so when I combine, you know, the medium of filmmaking with my own style of, uh, of music making plus songwriting, uh, those things combine together and they make something that I didn't, wouldn't have normally made, which is like a higher quality piece of art. Um, I don't know if that's a great example, to be honest, but that's what comes to mind. So yeah, I would say like, you learn them, I, for me at least, I learn the mediums first, and then, I, and then they just kind of combine naturally. Uh, that's, that's the way that feels most organically for me. But I can also see, if you like intellectual, I don't know, if you like have the idea of like, I don't know, take the medium of pottery and the medium of poetry. Those are literally two random things. that You engrave the poetry onto the pottery, and then you can view it in a 3D lens, like the, the words like intersect with each other in a 3D, in a 3D space. This is, this is off the top, but I'm, it's already sounding pretty sick. Um, then, I don't know, I, I, could, I could imagine making art like that. And sometimes I do think about like, oh man, like combine these two genres just as an intellectual exercise. But uh, I, I say for me, I think I typically do it like, um, I typically just have the tools in my toolbox first, and then I try to solve a problem and then the more tools I have in my toolbox, the more ways I can solve that problem. Uh, do you feel like you've created a new medium of art? Um, probably not. I don't think, uh, don't think green screen stuff. I mean, I don't know. It depends. You, you tell me. You tell me. Because uh, nothing comes to mind when I read this question, so probably not. Uh, but, I mean, the thing is, like, a new medium is, like, I've created like a new wrench, like a new kind of wrench that fixes, fixes a specific kind of problem. I will say uh, I've, like the, the post satire stuff in terms of like trying to create, um, a, uh, trying to popularize a form of satire that can be in interpreted in multiple different ways with different frameworks. Uh, I, I would say I, I probably, I might've popularized that, but I don't think I've invented anything. Bonus question, how do you plan on guiding the revolt against AI singularity and its consequences? Um, so I'm gonna come out as a robophobe. I'm gonna take a brick, push, 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 smash, smash every uh, every electronic I see. The Virgin um, uh, AI singularity versus the Chad me walking into his staples with a hammer and going push, 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 on all of the display case laptops push, 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 until I'm escorted out of the store. Uh, the Virgin AI supercomputer pew, 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 versus me uh, unplugging it. Push, no, pew. So, is art less, <laughs> sorry, I'm sorry, there's accelerationists in the audience, they don't, they don't like these robot hate crimes. Is art less a technical performance than a message passing through this performance, or can art be a performance in itself without a real message? Do independent drawers who draw too cute uwu things make art? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, so, I think this is probably going to come up a lot. I don't really know. There's a, there's a certain level of art, which is craftsmanship, which is 
separate, I would say, from art. Craftsmanship is like, can you really technically well do what you're doing? Um, and then the art is the intentionality, I would say, behind it. The thing that like elevates it to being a sort of higher form of uh, consumption. I mean, art can like, <laughs> but it's difficult, you know? Like you can have found art and then that doesn't have intention behind it. I think as soon as you start saying art is, you're probably wrong. Uh, and I don't even want to bother trying to explain it anymore. I just want to get into the practicality of, of making it. So um, yeah, I, I would say I, I have a lot of aversion towards questions like that, this because it's like, is architecture art? I think it can be. I think architecture can be art. I think beautiful, like crazy postmodernist ar architecture, it's hard to look at it and, and say that it's not art. Um, and sometimes the art shines through more than you'd expect it to. Like, there's some architecture which is built by a guy who, the architecture is so structurally unsound, the engineers were like, this isn't gonna work. But the architect's like, no, it has to fit my vision. And that's kind of an extreme example. Um, but, but just like a regular apartment building block, square, uh, is that art? Hard to say, hard to say. It seems like it's just more craftsmanship, like the craftsmanship of many, many people um, <laughs> put into a building. I don't know. What does art personally mean to you? How do you define it? How do you get over the cringe of how different your vision and end products are? Uh, <laughs> okay, there's gonna be two, three themes in these questions. One, one is gonna be, don't ask me <laughs> to, to say art is anything because I'm probably gonna be wrong. Uh, two is gonna be, um, here's my, here's just my general thoughts on AI. And then three, uh, I, I jailbroke chat GPT yesterday and it really blew my mind what you can make it do. Three, um, you're not going to get over anything. Everything's going to hurt. I hope you like pain. I hope you like pain. Um, <laughs> it's never going to stop hurting. I have a few questions. What does it mean to be an artist? Is there any difference between someone being one and someone simply making art? Do you label yourself an artist? If so, when do you consciously pick up the title and what change in your approach to the art that made that made it happen? Um, okay, I should probably cover that one first. What does it mean to be an artist? Is there any difference between someone being one and someone simply making art? I, an artist is someone who makes art? I, that seems like a good definition to me. Um, is there any difference between someone being one and someone simply making art? I think you can, you, I, I, I sort of see what they're intuiting there. That you can sort of uh, fall in love with this bohemian idea of an artist, which doesn't really even exist anymore. Um, and you can, you can fall in love with this aesthetic of being an artist. That was maybe what this, uh, what that person who wanted to be an artist was getting at. Uh, in terms of like, I respect them so much and I think they're so cool and I wanna be like them, but I'm not naturally artistic. Do you label yourself as an artist? I do, and I, and I do label myself as an artist because I find it to be a helpful and orienting label. And I think that's why people use labels in the first place. Like, if something is confusing about your identity, a label clarifies it, defines it. Um, you gotta be careful with them, but I, I'm, a big, a big, I'm a big label believer, so. If so, when did you consciously pick up the title and what changed in your approach to, to art that made it happen? Um, I always knew that I wanted to make art and I didn't know exactly what that meant, but I knew it could take a lot of different forms. And I really liked the idea of getting a bunch of different kinds of artistic skills in my toolbox so I could make a bunch of different kinds of art. And specifically what excites me is being able to make art that nobody else can make. So it's like, some, it's like unique to me, my voice, um, my perspective or whatever, or just my skills, my knowledge even, like something that I, I know that most people don't know about that I can use to pull on to make different kinds of art. Um, I'm not sure there's any specific point where I was like, mm -hmm, yeah, this is what I'm doing. Uh, and in fact, I, I think there probably wasn't because I've, I've been making art as long as I can remember. 
Um, and I don't think there was any specific change. I just knew that I wanted to do it so badly. So, so badly, all the time. CJ the X made a video essay about subjectivity, which he discussed the idea that art creation process, there's a constant conflict between self-expression and translating to the audience. Yeah, that sounds about right. How much do you think about the reception of your work as you create it, if at all? How does it influence your artistic process? So I think uh, what I try to do with my art is specifically make the kind of art that is aware that it's being watched, if that makes sense. Like, I wanna make art that is conscious of its place in an internet landscape where you are gonna be viewed without context. You're gonna be viewed by people you don't know. You're gonna be viewed by people from different countries. You're gonna be viewed by people who uh, believe different things than you. You're gonna be viewed by people who believe things that you find reprehensible or crazy or psychotic. Um, and you need to take all of that into account and, and realize that you can say the most basic thing with your art and people will misinterpret it. People will, um, people will be confused by it. People will, people will you know, get angry at a definition for your art that you didn't even imply. And you need to be aware. I mean, you don't need to be aware, but I, I have been, been aware of all that stuff and in making my art. And so, you know, it, uh, it comes off. It comes off in it. And it's kind of like this idea of <laughs> um, I, 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 it's kind of the idea of like you really shouldn't like say something unless you can see <laughs> every way someone could pick it apart. And then you're like, okay, I see all those ways. I'm going to say it now. Um, or you can just be a Chad. And just go, blah, say, say stuff as much as you want. I don't know. I, I, par partially why I wanted to do this is because I wanted to t talk out my own, my own thought process on this. Because I, I really don't know it. I mean, I'm, I'm creating it as I say it. What do you feel about AI art? Do you think it steals unethically from artists? Or does it draw inspiration from them like all real artists do? How do you think AI art, AI art should be dealt with? And how do you think it would impact the future? Push, push, push. This is a rock, by the way. Push, push. You. Greetings, humans. Prepare to die. Chad, me, unplugging it. Pew. Psh, psh. Hey, give me your phone. Psh, psh. Do you think at some point in the future there will be a mainstream return from abstraction slash conceptualism to classical representation slash realism? Yes. I, uh, okay, same question. Is art sexy? Only if it's Rose from Sonic the Hedgehog. How did you decide what type of artist you wanted to be? Were the various iterations of your art a conscious choice or did you allow it to evolve over time? How much did algorithms determine what art you made, that being separate from content? Um, can you separate the desire of the algorithm from the work that you create? I don't think so. I don't think so anymore. I mean, if you're aiming to be a successful person, you can make art just for your own personal benefit. And uh, I have, um, and I do. But if you're, if you're going after it in a way where you're trying to make art sustainable for yourself, then you need to what I call earn artist bucks. So earning artist bucks means consciously performing for the algorithm so that you gain enough momentum such that you can create your own personally fulfilling art. And uh, it's not an ideal situation <laughs> to hear about if you're a very self-driven person. And it can be difficult for very self-driven people to wrap their head around this, heads around this. But it is often, I mean, it's a sometimes necessary strategy for being able to make the kind of stuff that you do want to make. Uh, were the very iter various iterations of your art a conscious choice or did you just allow it to evolve over time? Hmm. Um, it's hard to say, you know, how much of it is conscious and how much it, of it just evolves. Um, and how did you decide, decide what type of artist you wanted to be? Look, if you have the brain worms that make you an artist, you probably have the brain worms that are intuiting what kind of artist you want to be. For me, my brain worms were just saying, I want to be kind of like a avant-garde. I wanted to have a lot of um, tools in my toolbox to make different things. But beyond that, I don't know, just evolve naturally. Is making art while you have another job something manageable? Yes. 
Yeah, it is. Yes, it's manageable. Uh, is it the best strategy? I don't know. Um, I have friends who work jobs and, and make art on the side. It's manageable. They manage it. If you had it, how did you deal with the irrational fear of not being perfect on the first try? Um, feel pain. <laughs> Stop avoiding pain. Stop. Just feel pain. It's fine. You feel pain. You feel uncomfortable. And you're like, oh. And then you're like, huh, that was just a reaction my little body was doing there. It's fine. My body can do that. It's fine. Ah! Ah! And then you're like, ah, I bet it will feel less painful the second time. And then you do it the second time. You're like, ah! 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 And it's even worse. <laughs> This is a great, this is a very inspiring stream, Greg. Thank you. What artists inspire you? What made you decide to try digital art? What programs do you use? What's it like being an artist that creates art in so many different forms? Uh, what artists inspire you? I have no inspirations. I only hate people. <laughs> Except that Iranian filmmaker. He's pretty good. What made you decide to t this, uh, try digital art? I, I should say, um, no, there are artists that inspire me, but it's, it's just not really important. Uh, what made you decide to try digital art? Just being hyper online, chronically online, dopamine, messed fella. How about that? What programs do you use? Um, Final Cut, Final Cut for edit, video editing, um, Procreate for drawing, uh, Evernote for writing. Uh, it doesn't matter though, <laughs> it doesn't matter really. You can use whatever you want. Uh, what's it like being an artist that creates art in so many different forms? Uh, I don't know. It's pretty cool, I guess. <laughs> uh, I've never, you know, I, I, I do get, um, I do feel pretty constricted in if, I, if I'm making one kind of thing over and over again. Um, cause I start to feel like people who do just like one of the people who do just stick to one form of art their whole life. Uh, and I have to actively try not to do that. And I actively do try not to do that. So that's a conscious thing that I, I have to make myself do because the incentive is to just do the same thing over and over again, once you find something that works, but that's not satisfying for me. So I don't do that. Videos are the main form you are delivering your art in. I think you do your great job on using video as a medium. Your thoughts and insights would help me and other artists experiment with video as an art form. That's interesting because actually I feel like the actual video element of what I'm doing is probably my weakest element. Like the visuals, um, I can do weird green screen stuff fine and I can point a camera at myself and talk and the scripting is fine. I feel confident about that. I feel less confident with the actual video aspect of it. Can you share your, and I'd like to get better or hire somebody eventually maybe to help me with that. Um, can you share your perspective on how video can contribute to contemporary art, particularly in comparison to other forms like painting and installation? Um, now I'm a little confused. Can you share your perspective on how video can contribute to contemporary art? How can video contribute to contemporary art, particularly in comparison to forms like painting and installation? Oh, installation. <laughs> when you said installation, I was thinking like installing like windows. Like, hmm. <laughs> Um, it's a good question. Uh, I'm, I don't, I, I'm not a good person to ask about contemporary art, mainly because every time I go to a museum, it's terrible. It's awful. It's the, I left a one star review on a museum saying, <laughs> I thought it was a money laundering operation once because I was just so, I was just, I was, I couldn't handle it anymore. I couldn't, I couldn't handle it anymore. It was so bad. Every museum I've ever been to has been terrible. And, uh, and maybe that's just Canadian museums or something, because I, I haven't been to that many museums. But a lot of contemporary art that I see is bad, very bad. <laughs> um, that's nothing to set, be said about contemporary art, because I'm sure there's good contemporary art. But I've never, with my own eyes in a museum, witnessed it. So I'm, I'm probably a bad person to ask about that. 
Do you think video art always are to an extent storytelling, unlike painting, which can be used to, to be a narrative or non-narrative? Yeah, well, if you ever think, if you, like, is art always like this? My answer is probably gonna be no. Um, video art doesn't have to be storytelling, you know? Um, if I mean, the museum art that I see that uses video, which is bad, <laughs> is not telling a story at all. It's like images and weird sounds. Ooh, a, a bird cooing in the distance. Doesn't do it for me personally. Um, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. How would you define your art? Is it some kind of performance? You don't like labeling it. I think the art you do is pretty unique and bizarre, and I just want to know more about it. Uh, there's elements of performance art to some of the stuff that I do. Um, I don't mind labeling it. Uh, labels are like, you know, you use them. You use them tactfully and sparingly. Um, or you just gobble up as many as you can. I like that approach too, but... Um, I, I don't know. I mean, I, I'm more interested in in, um, in reading other people's interpretations of my art rather than like thinking about my own art too much. Uh, how do you get over something in the art process continuously not going your way and not feeling right? Do you take days or weeks away from it and work on another project? And when you do you usually get that light bulb moment, don't say in the shower, I know you don't shower. Um, how do you get over something in the art process? Right, okay. Uh, I think it helps to have multiple projects on the go. Uh, and I, this is a risky thing for me to tell you because um, I don't want you getting distracted. And I do get distracted by having too many ideas. Um, but I think if you have two or three at least video, like ideas on the go, if number one starts becoming like a huge block for you, maybe it is good to just switch to number two or number three if you're feeling more inspired at the time. I would say like follow your inspiration, wherever your inspiration is, is leading you. If you if, if roadblock after roadblock happens on idea number one, no shame in uh, going working on idea number two for a while. Um, yeah, I don't know. That's one option. Uh, the other option is set yourself a deadline and just say, by this deadline, it's gonna be done and whatever, who cares. If it's, if, it's, if it's not what I imagined it to be, then that's just how it is. How do you get your fear of overpublishing your ideas? Sometimes I always rely on my future self to publish the idea soon without really doing anything about it. Um, so, feel pain! <laughs> feel it! You're not going to avoid feeling bad in your life. I don't, I don't see what the point is. You, you're, it's nothing you do is going to prevent you from feeling bad. <laughs> or feeling afraid. But I, I know what you're saying. Get over it. How do, how do you get over it? Um, I would say a deadline. Give yourself a good deadline. Watch my map for artist video. Give yourself a deadline. Externalize it. Give yourself a punishment associated with missing the deadline. You'll probably do it if you make it real. And you'll still feel fear. You'll feel so much fear that you'll want to just miss the deadline, but you'll be like, but I don't want to lose 50 bucks, so I'm going to do it anyway. Do you believe that a work of art can be objectively good or bad? It's a good question. Uh, yeah, I think it probably can objectively be good. Be better or worse? I think you can, I think you probably can make that assessment, yeah. Do you experience a situation when you have a topic for a piece of art, but lack ideas on its actual form? How do you handle this? So, I'll give you an example of how I write my songs. So I don't write my songs with music in mind. I write just the lyrics. Um, <laughs> uh, and then I, I uh, eventually like I'll, I'll, I, I compile instrumentals from people who send me instrumentals, and I have like a list of these instrumentals. And then when I have a song, I go through the instrumentals and I try to match the words up with the instrumental. Um, So, yeah, I don't know. It's it is hard. That that's how. It, but that's how I work. That's how I work with um with that with like that sort of style. Uh, I'm trying to think of other examples of when I have a, 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 a I, I I'm trying to grasp the form of a project, but I can't. Um, 
I, I would say mostly when I have a like a, a concept, I can grasp the form pretty well. Uh, at this point for me, it's like mostly a, uh, it's mostly like a video idea, but sometimes I have like meme ideas that I want to make and like put on Instagram or something. That's that's something else I've been tr I've been thinking I should try is like doing Instagram meme stuff because I enjoy seeing meme Instagram memes, and uh, I, I was like mm, I I, I want to try making some myself because just as a another tool to have in my toolkit, me being a meme maker, like a, like a, like a picture meme maker. Um, but I would say normally when I have an idea, I do get a, um, I have an idea of the, of the form I want it to take. And when I don't, um, that's, that's, that ends up being where like other people can be really helpful uh, to like, I have this, I have this concept and then you know other people and then the, the, you see like, I have this form, and then the concept fits perfectly into the form. But you're an atomized individual. You're an atomized individual, and you have to try to figure out how to make art by yourself because that's the world, that's the sad world you live in. So, uh, I mean, uh, uh, I mean, everything's fine. Relax. Relax. Everything's fine. How do I tell my parents that I'll never go to uni, but will instead write a book and be the disappointing one? My entire family is very high achieving in academics. Um, hmm. I don't know. I'm tempted to just say, just write the book and don't don't bother telling them. Um, that's a question for your therapist. What are your thoughts on art that is made strictly to explore compositional ideas slash absolute art? Serialist music or music concrete. Um, I'm not 100% sure what those are. I'd like to find out about them. That, that sounds very interesting. Um, if they are what I think they are, like, if they're, if they're basically like, okay, you go down, a, uh, when you're making art, you can go down a dopamine rabbit hole of, let's say you get into music, all right? And then there's so many components to music. Let's say you get into like the, the, the bass, the, and then you get into drumming, just the drum bass, okay? And then somehow you go so deep into just the mechanics of drum bass that you think it's a good idea to just start making art, which is like playing around with the fundamental concept of a drum bass. And the music that you're making sounds bad, objectively, but you're so far down this dopamine rabbit hole that you're making this art. It, uh, I don't know. That's uh, it's 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 tough for me to say because it's very possible there's another hundred people who are all also down that same dopamine rabbit hole and they listen to your music and they're like, finally, yes, the drum bass guy, yeah. <laughs> uh, so I don't know. It's 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 an interesting it's an interesting question. Um, what I think of is one of my friends is a music theory guy, and he. Um, he, he, he really likes this guy called Jacob something who plays around with music theory and uh, everyone there's probably someone yelling at me in the comments right now uh, Jacob Collier um, he might be an example of what I'm describing there uh, where he's he's down that dopamine rabbit hole, but it's it's maybe not maybe not a good example to use him because I think a lot of people would argue that his his songs his music does actually sound objectively really good, um, so <laughs> I don't know. I also don't even know what serialist music or music concrete is, and I could check my chat. Uh, and I checked my chat, and. Uh, Okay, wait, hold on. Uh, uh. Listen to the puzzle by Devin Townsend. Huh. No, later, later, don't get distracted. This is my problem, you know, this is my problem with art as well, is distraction, distraction. You're never gonna finish art if you get distracted. You gotta focus, 
You gotta focus. You can't learn everything all at once. You gotta complete the task that you set out to do. What values guide you when you approach making a piece of art? Are they the same values you usually appreciate in art and you consume, or those are different? Oh, great question. I actually remember reading that, this question before. I'm like, wow, it's a great question. Um, I really don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I feel like I really, I can't relate to art that is like, um, like music, for example, that's just totally like, just about like partying. And it has no, nothing, nothing to grasp me, no human element. Just like, bah, 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 bah. Uh, <laughs> but at the same time, stuff that's too close to what I would do, I have the jealousy problem where I'm like, oh God, I wish I made that. And then that sort of like turns me off of it. So I don't know, there's probably like a, a good centrist middle ground here uh, to, uh, to that question where there's like something about it that appeals to me, but it's not so close to what I would do that I'm just like, well, like I understand it too well, you know? It's like, I know you're, I know your game, I know what you're doing. You're, you, you, you have a shitty green screen like me and you're using cardboard on your face. Anyway. Effectively just media talking about media. I can't help that YouTube incentivizes people to watch more media about media than the media they're talking about. It's this weird feeling of recursion that we're ignoring real art for shit that's easily consumable, even if I feel they have positively influenced me. I'm always thinking about doing my own videos of this nature. I actually had a whole series on my channel planned called Media About Media About Media. This is another one of my one trillion ideas that will probably never happen. But I had like 10 or 11 video scripts, which were just media about media about media. Um, because I think we have so much media about media, we could make a lot of media about media about media and we would be fine. Um, I should probably do this as a, as a two-part stream, I've just realized, because I shouldn't, shouldn't spend all night, night on this one. Um, but this is, a, this, is an interesting, um, this is an interesting point. Do you think this sort of content has value as art, or that the uh, way YouTube structure is stripping the value away from the art? Or do you think there's a third or even fourth option that I'm just not seeing here? Um, Hmm. I see, I see what the question is. It's basically like, do I want to contribute to art on the art analysis critic level and be like, here's why you should like Dune uh, or do I want to write Dune? For me, you know, I was an arts journalist and it was really, uh, really painful for me to be writing about art when I wanted to be making art. That was, uh, it was like looking through the window on a cold winter's night at the family eating turkey roast without you. <laughs> and all you're doing is writing, the turkey roast was delicious for the beautiful family. But you're like one stage removed from what you, wi you wish. God, I wish that was me inside the house eating the turkey roast. Or maybe the turf tofurkey roast if you're vegetarian. Um, it's an interesting question. And uh, man, there is just, there is a lot of media about media. There's more content than ever before. And uh, this is what I would keep in mind if you're like worried though, is that if you're, if you're trying to be an artist <laughs> and you're worried there's too much competition, your competition is not particularly steep. Because if you can hold yourself to a schedule and uh, say anything, <laughs> those are the two things you have to do. You'll probably over a long enough period of time make it. Say anything, anything, have anything to contribute, anything at all and just not annihilate your attention span with content. The bar is so low, it's so low. <laughs> it's so low and, 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 and basically like I'm here, I'm here in terms of the bar being like, the bar is like minimal and I'm like here. Um, that was a bit of a tangent, vouch. How do you know that something is qualified as art? You'll never know, you'll never know. How do you do art? It's not just ruminate and fantasize about ideas, but actually get over the fear of failure, the mortifying ordeal of being known, the second guessing little voice. See, I don't understand. <laughs> I do understand, actually. I completely understand. Um, you're not feeling these things because you're wrong. You're feeling these things because all of this is true. You should be afraid of failing. 
Because the world doesn't reward failure. It casts it out. You should fear being known. Being known is horrible and being perceived is terrifying. And the second-guessing little voice telling you the world doesn't need your poetry zine is right! Because the onus is on you to tell the world why the poetry zine is needed. No one else will rep your poetry zine. So, uh, yeah, you're feeling all those things because your fears are justified. Um, you're, you're, you have brain worms for even wanting this in the, in the first place. And you must do it! You must do it now! That's my advice. Aye, aye, aye. Must art be intentional, or can someone create art merely through the way they look, behave, and live their life? Uh, I err on the side of intentionality, but also understand that some people will have artistic experiences with things which are not intentional. Um, but I will say the vast majority is, is going to be intentional, and the, and the art that I seek to create has a kind of intention to it. Even though it's not always necessarily logically plotted out in my mind, like I, I, I can look at what I've made and, and, and I, I know that there is intention to it. Even if the intention is to appear as if there's no intention or to be confusing. Um, because the confusion ha serves a social purpose in deconstructing whatever presuppositions you were coming into the art with in the first place. How do you feel about using AI to create push, 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 push. How do you keep the process of making art fun while also struggling to not get shit on for what you deliver? I'm struggling a lot lately with the fact that I'm more concerned with how to make my work appeal to others um, than with whether I still enjoy or even get what I'm doing. Is that a function of the learning process? Is it temporary? Um, <laughs> this is a funny one. What do you hope that life imitates next? That's good. That's good. Um, I'll, I'll start with this. Uh, I think you should probably, there should be a part at least, of the artistic process you genuinely love. Um, otherwise, I don't know, if you don't love making art, just do something less psychotic with your time, probably, I would say. Um, how do you keep the process of making art fun? I, I, but I do understand, like, you definitely can get into slumps. I, I, I think, you know, I just think I have multiple projects on the go. And if you stop having fun with one, leave it alone. Come back to it a little later. Like, here, I'll give you an example. Um, I've been researching transmaxing, which is this idea that uh, you can, um, it's basically the idea of like, I don't even wanna get into it, but I, I was thinking, you know, I was doing some research into it and um, I was thinking about like, I could make a documentary on this and I could interview all these different voices and it would, man, that's, that would actually be a really interesting documentary. There'd, there'd be a lot of interesting people I could talk to about the phenomenon and blah, 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 and you know, how much weight to even put on it. Um, and, but then I was like getting overwhelmed by this. I'm like, that's way too much stuff, way too much stuff. And I have all these other ideas I'd rather do. And then I started, I'm like, oh man, is that gonna be a slog? And I'm, I'm leaning right now towards, it's probably gonna be a slog. <laughs> and I have other way, like a million other ideas that I, I, I have really, really have to get to. Like they're, it's past the point of urgency and it's on fire now. And so I probably will just attend to those other ideas because I have to. But I don't know, I think you should always be doing stuff that you, you're feeling yourself invested in uh, and you're having fun about. And if you're not having fun making art, then you're really just getting the worst of both worlds, I'd say. Or at least being engaged or something, you know? If your dopamine is firing, you know, that's better than nothing. What piece of art do you think influenced you most as an artist? Super Smash Flash. Yeah, <laughs> not video game on newgrounds.com. Does it take an artist to really appreciate art? No, 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 no. I don't know why I had such a negative reaction to that question. No, I don't know. I guess it, yeah, I guess it could, it could strike me as elitist or something, but I mean, I understand where it's coming from. Cause like, you can like take it apart. I don't know, do you need to, do you need to be able to build a car to drive a car well, or like to really appreciate the car? Maybe, maybe you need to know how, maybe intellectually. Ah, I don't know. I don't know, I don't think so. My, my, I lean no. What does art mean to you? Performance art, visual art, all of it. Um, is it something you just have to get out of your system or do you hope the art leaves a lasting impact on the people it touches? Um, 
Huh. I think it's hard to make a lot of art and not want it to leave an impact on people. At the same time, not all the art you're going to make is going to leave a big impact on everybody. And if it, if, it, if, if every art thing I made, you know, if I'm making three videos a week, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and it's all making impacts on you, that's like, I'm leaving holes in you. I'm abusing you. Bam, bam, bam. Three impacts a week. Are you kidding me? I, I say one good impact a month. <laughs> the problem is, this is actually a problem. Listen really closely, okay? Because this is actually a really big problem. Uh, <laughs> there is more art than ever, but you are in a position to receive art less than ever. What medium of art tends to speak to you, make you feel the loudest, and make you feel the loudest, and why? Um, what makes me cry? That's a good question. Uh, man, I don't know. I mean, I, I haven't, I haven't been made to cry a lot. I recently, like when I cry, it's because. I have enough time alone to think long enough to like unpack a thought that's really painful for me. And then, then I cry. Um, and then I try to make art the, out of the things that like hit me in the heart, uh, the hardest. But in terms of a medium, I don't know. I mean, I, I do consume a lot of video content. I don't consume as much poetry as I would like to, but that's partially just because there's not a lot of great poetry right now. Um, There is a lot of good spoken word, actually, that, that used to really hit me hard. Um, but that's just because that's my, that happens to be my, my area. Uh, music? Hmm. Hmm. Feel the loudest. I don't know. That's a, that's a hard question. I don't, think I, I don't think I compartmentalize it via medium. When did you realize you wanted to create art for a living? As soon as I realized that I... Uh, I wasn't going to be able to make a living off of art uh, in any reasonable way. Like, as soon as I realized how the world worked, <laughs> then it, it wasn't it wasn't so much wanted as needed. Do you understand? I I, I was going to make art either way. Like, I can't not. But um, for a living, uh, I could not. I couldn't do it. I just couldn't do it. I couldn't. I couldn't do it. And uh, maybe I would have gotten over that, or maybe I wouldn't have. I don't, I don't know the timeline where I, I, it didn't work. <laughs> that's, that's all I want to say. Is it currently possible to produce art without the desire for it to be well received? Does this limit the angles we can even conceptualize an art to approach in? So the framework I'm coming at this from is if you're making art, you're trying to make art so that you can make more art. <laughs> you're trying to make, you're trying to be an artist such that you can, the reason you should want to, if, if this is something that you want, make art um, for a living, and this is very small subset of, 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 of the people who are going to be watching this. But the people who want to make art for a living, the reason you want to make art for a living is so you can make more art and become better at the art that you make because you have more time to make the art. But you can make art just for yourself. And then in that case, you don't have to worry about it being well received. However, I would ask you, what are you making? Who, who are you making art for? If it's just for yourself, fine. Um, and then yes, it is actually completely possible to produce art without the desire for it to be well received. Um, but I hope it's well received to you. That's all I can say. I hope you can look at look back at it in, in a month and say, this was great. And if so, if you can do that, people, other people probably can as well. And then you can make stuff that has some social value to it. I like this. I like making art that has social value in, in a sense. I like art that can help people. I like the concept of that. Um, but I don't, I don't always do that. I mean, because sometimes it's just more about, sometimes it is more, for me, more about um, this. What is, what is, what's it called? This, uh, this absolute art. I'm gonna look more into absolute art. That's a, that's a cool concept. How, how do you deal with your art being ill-received? Um, like in a general sense, not to imply that your art is ill-received. Oh, my art is ill-received, fella. And, uh, <laughs> I mean, you know, no matter what you do, you will you will have ill-received art. Here's how I dealt with my art being ill-received when I was starting out. I made um I made a bunch of satire videos, and people would be misunderstanding the satire videos. Like I made a video about misanthropy, and I'm like, I hate I hate people, and you you suck, and you're a slime ball because I'm a misanthrope, you see. 
And the joke is that I'm explaining misanthropy, but I'm misanthropic about it. And people will be like in the comments, be like, why are you being so mean to me? Unsubscribe. You should really treat your viewers better. And this would drive me insane. Because to me, it was super obvious, you know, what I was doing. Um, but how do you deal with your art being ill-received? <laughs> Suffer. <laughs> Suffer. If you have the chance to make art without an audience prime to your previous work, what would it be? Oh, that's a great question. Um, I would probably do, I don't know. It's hard to divorce myself from where I am as an artist right now in this per current moment. Would I put myself anywhere else? Um, I don't know. I don't know. I am where I am due to the excellent series of choices I've made in my life. Uh, <laughs> But if I could just start over and teleport somewhere else. Um, maybe I would make a, I would probably make a, uh, like a world, like a fantasy world of some kind with like a cool twist. You know, like a post-apocalyptic fantasy world. That's like a cool idea to me, write a book. Um, but, but I think, Maybe what I would do, actually, I'm working on Choose Your Own Adventure. That This is like an interactive uh, novel game with like a thousand pages. So it's like a lot and you kind of get lost in it. And it deals with the fifth dimension, which is the idea that you have a timeline and then you have you have splits to the timeline, which is the fifth dimension. And then it's, it's this idea that like all of these timelines exist simultaneously. And every time you make a choice in the Choose Your Own Adventure, another branch branches off. If I had to, <laughs> if I, if I could start, a, if I could like, wipe the slate clean of what you know me for and reestablish myself as an interactive fiction guy, I'd probably do interactive fiction. But I, I don't know. I mean, I'm not, <laughs> I'm, I'm pretty sad. I'm, I'm, I made my choices as, as a, uh, in terms of being interested in what I'm interested in and being where I am. So not sure if I'm too late to ask, but if in case I'm not, how do you get yourself to create when you're stuck in one of those eight hours pits of nothing? I love what I do, but my brain worms still have it in for me. Nicotine gum. That's the answer. You're like, on your phone, get some nicotine gum out. Lol. Mmm. All of a sudden, the dopamine's flowing. What should I be doing again? All right. You got energy. That's the only way. That's the only way. Let me give you a better answer. Let me give you a less true, but better sounding answer. Um, I think, I think I would probably reinforce the deadline idea as much as I can when you have a job. Let's say you have a shift at your job at 6 p.m. and it's 4 p.m. You will go to the job at 6 p.m. So just make it real. If you can commit to your job like that, you can commit to your artistic process like that. Otherwise, you're just not taking it as seriously as your job. And if your job, you take it more seriously than your art, the job's going to win every time in terms of mattering in your life. What's your favorite food, art to eat? Definitely paint. How do you deal with working against parasocial relationships? Um, yeah, this is, this is a big thing for me. It's extremely difficult for you as a creator, first of all, to be disciplined enough to not overshare, especially when the fan base encourages you to do so. Uh, early on, when it feels like there's no risk. You do feed yourself to the machine. This is a, this is a concept that I've rat that's been rattling around in my head, like grind yourself up, feed the masses. Um, I don't know. I mean, I really go back and forth. I, I found it a lot easier to be open and honest earlier. And then, you know, you're like, it kind of just feels gross or weird at some point. And you're like, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe, maybe these people, maybe these private people were onto something. But no, I mean, I do want to, I think to the, to the extent that the stories you can tell can have social value and aren't just meaningless. There's a lot of stories I should tell that actually do have social value that I have to still get over some things about myself or other people. And it's hard, like, you know, but it, it's, it's hard. <laughs> it's hard. I would just say, you know, though, I think you should probably still err on the side of oversharing. 
as an artist. <laughs> because it's better for you to overshare and for that oversharing to help you succeed than for you to be overly private and not make the kind of thing that would have that emotional effect or that social value or that interesting point that only you can make with your own personal experience by hiding that from the world. And this is something I still have to learn myself. By the way, everything I've said is something I still have to learn myself. How do you handle not being seen the way you see yourself? Um, I don't see myself. I just uh, look at what the YouTube comments say and adjust my identity accordingly. How do you cannot completely change directions when you're with, with your art when you receive any feedback or criticism? Fun fact, I do that uh, all the time. Um, and that's partially what has led to the sort of post-satirical style that I do a lot. Um, it's just like, I said one thing, you're wrong. And then I say another thing, you're wrong. And then so many of these like, you're wrong, you're wrong, you're wrong, you're wrong, you're wrong, you're wrong, you're wrong. You, you just like explode. <laughs> schizophrenically occupy every space at the same time. Um, do you see a distinction that between art that's intended to be pleasant to consume, art which is intended to push the artist's skills, and art that's intended to share and explore an idea? I do uh, see differences between these things. Um, I make art sometimes that I'm mainly doing to test the technical skill. Um, I had, I had, I started making videos where there's two people on screen at the same time talking, and that taught me sort of how to um, do that. It was like an experiment. Or the the Vor video on my channel is a good idea because that's an animation that I did, um, and I wouldn't normally have posted it anywhere. Uh, I don't know. These are different. Th th yes, these are three different things. Uh, how do you not go crazy comparing your art to other people's in your field? I do go crazy. I'm an insane person, but I'm trying to be regular now. I'm doing my best. And I got to say, I'm not doing a particularly good job. Uh, but recovery is a process. And uh, I would say I'm on the up and up. I'm on the up and up. I'm, I'm approaching regularity. I think another month or so, I'll be, I'll be fully there. What mediums of art do you work with that you wouldn't slash don't show on YouTube? Um, I would probably not, uh, probably poetry. Actually, that's a good, good question. Yes. Yes, 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 yes. Like, like actual written poetry is probably, what can I, what can I show you? Ah, okay. Here, this is, this is a, this is a written poem. I believed alone I would be beset by thoughts. However, alone my dominant thought is nothing and it's nice that's like that's something i write for myself basically uh because i don't i don't have anywhere to put it uh it doesn't relate to anything i would talk about on my channel and uh it's not really written for other people's you know consumption it's just it's just a way of expressing a complicated thought with words as simply as possible um for me for me for me that's not to say that I wouldn't do it though, and, and that like if I if I can find a way of, of um, I don't know, translating that into uh, something that I would share with people, and that I felt like I should share with people, then I would do that. What do you think? But yeah, that's my answer. Is probably written poetry with, with like instead of spoken poetry. Uh, what do you think is the artist's place in our society? In an ideal society, how would that be different? Uh, artist's place in our society. Artists should be. Uh, <laughs> uh, see, this is the black and white thinking. The funniest thing for me to say is either as, as artist kings who are ruling, like philosopher kings from, from Socrates, but artists instead. Or they're like, <laughs> they're the guys under the uh, Omelus, you know, the, those that walk away from Omelus, where it's this perfect city, but there's a bunch of like tortured artists that are, are used to be prodded and, and tortured and flayed to keep the city running. Um, I don't know. All I know is that we, we truly live in a society. I think in an ideal society, um, <laughs> uh, we would probably value stuff that doesn't have an immediate um, purpose. Like, <laughs> like 
if you want to be an artist and you want to hone your skills, then you'd be able to do that without just needing rich parents. But uh, I don't know. I don't know. It's up to you. I don't really have any thoughts about politics anymore or society. So I have so many ideas, but I'm hardly ever motivated to see them all the way through. Do you have any advice? Pick your top three ideas and then pitch those top three ideas to your friends and see which one they would like the most and then make that one. I feel like art has made me lose touch with reality and my deepest expectations are highly skewed. Hello, stream viewer. How can I go back to being healthy and not feel like a part of me is perpetually missing? Sounds like you have schizophrenia. I'm just gonna be real with you. You should take N-acetylcysteine and niacin. Uh, you should also look into um, maybe D-serine and uh, omega-3 is probably good. Uh, try a keto diet, because sometimes it can be sugar and carbohydrates that are, are triggering this. Uh, nah, I'm just kidding, I'm just kidding. Um, maybe just meditate, who knows? Related to the recent AI art controversy, I have seen some people say that AI, psh, 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 psh. do you think anything can be more or less art than anything else? Or do you take a more egalitarian view? Um, I think there probably is a sliding scale because, I mean, come on, like if you take 100 people off the street and you put, um, you put like a, something that's clearly art, like a, a, a painting, um, like a recent painting that has multiple meanings and interpretations on one end and you put uh, a pile of bricks on the other end, you could say that there's some art to the bricks, but people are gonna say more or less that the art is more than the, the bricks. So, you know, I, I guess I'm bowing to public consensus there, but uh, we need to have meanings for words, so. Does art education matter to you? Does it in general, does it in general or is it just a time waster? By the way, if I, if I say something about art philosophically that you disagree with, it really should not mean anything because it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It's fun to think about, but it doesn't matter. If you're trying to be an artist that makes art, it doesn't matter. Your philosophy on art is irrelevant. Just make the art. Does art education, high school slash college matter to you? Does it in general or is it a time waster? I never got formally trained in art and I do wonder what would happen if I, if I did, but I never did, so I can't tell you. Uh, short form is, rep is replacing long form content. As much as I support more people creating art, lots of low effort content exists because of it, correct like really low effort and low depth. I notice myself instinctively reaching for my phone, only to remember it's not entertaining more. I just feel like I should enjoy myself every free second I have, probably because when we're young, our time is stolen from us. This is part of the reason I've been consuming less and less. And creating more is general drive to become a better artist. Yeah, that's good advice. I would say if you wanna be a good artist, you should consume less, less content. Um, yeah, no, that's, and, that, and that's that's a tough pill to swallow, because we love we love content, don't we, folks? But I actually think you probably should consume less content and be very particular about the content that you do consume. Um, what are your thoughts on TikTok? Short style seems devoid of any creativity. Content not art. Yeah, you know, I I, I agree with this. I'm you know I'm probably going to make some of these content style shorts to or pay to earn my artist bucks, right? Um, but. I'm not putting my my artistic soul into it. It's just kind of like, ah, well, you know, you gotta do this to, to do that. Um, but that being said, you can still, that's not even necessarily true. You can still inject your artistic style and find art in the kind of content that people complain about. Um, and in fact, the sort of art that you can do that will be the most successful is gonna be um, some, horrifying fusion of content and art, okay? That's just how it is, that's the world you live in. If the world changes, I'll update this philosophy, but sadly, uh, this, is, this is where we're at. But yes, consume less content, I agree. Uh, lots of CJ the X reps here. Uh, I should watch this video, um, whatever, I think, I, either the Bo Burnham video or some other video, but yes. Hmm. Should art be more divided between digital and physical world or more intertwined? I, I can't say should, but it definitely is. Uh, does art ever feel like... Oh, also, this guy makes good. Good vids. Good vids. 
Does art ever feel like a job to you? Well, it's literally my job. <laughs> so I'd say yes. I'd say uh, probably yeah. Um, but the actual art making is good. But the stuff around the art making, trying to make myself more efficient as an artist, not na doesn't come naturally to me. It's hard. How do you decide how much of yourself to deny while making a project? Sleep, food, time with loved ones, things your animal body wants. What's the limit? Do you know or do you find out each time? I find out each time. Um, sometimes it's the right move to say like, hey, pals, I'm not going to hang out today. I've got this thing to do. I, I really have to focus on it and I haven't had time to work on it all day. Sometimes it's like, I'm going to enjoy my life more if I hang out with my friends and see loved ones. So I'm going to do that. And then I come home at 11 and then I just, one hour of like really intense, high focus work because I'm in a good enough mood to do it. And I'm reading a book called The Happiness Advantage that says that if you're happier, you'll be more successful. Yeah. So you got to be happy. You feel like AI generated art is something artists should be worried about. How do you create real or unreal things? What do you expect the future of art, especially internet art, to look like? How does an artist go about crossing that gap between cyberspace and meat space? I'm interested in concepts like futures, utopia, and reality. Those are cool concepts. Um, can answer this, to be honest. What do you mean by new things? Everyone creates new things. Crossing that gap between cyberspace and meat space. It's definitely is coming from the brain worms. <laughs> I don't know if you can cross that gap. Um, these are cool concepts to be interested in. Keep, keep it up. And uh, what do you expect the future of art, especially internet art, to look like? Can't answer this. How do you create real or unreal things? Not sure I understand the question. I don't know if you'll come back to the thread, but I have a few questions. Uh, how do you know when it's time to move on um, to a new one? Uh, uh, that's that's good question. I, I guess, uh, I don't know, That that is a good question. I guess for like the mayor stuff, it's like the mayoral arc ends. But other than that, I, I, I think the, uh, the eras do tend to go on for, for a long time. Do you feel like people tend to latch onto content you don't make anymore? Center side, for example, brought you a lot of popularity. But do you ever fear that people would want you to keep making that after you've already moved on? How do you deal with that? You know, I, I do, I would still enjoy making center side, but I almost like intentionally don't. <laughs> Just because it's too easy. It's too easy. I can do this forever. And I need to, be constantly putting myself in a position of strain and challenge in order to keep growing artistically. And that's more important to me. Um, that being said, you know, I think I've considered just making like a separate channel for Centricide and being like, if you want Centricide content, I'll happily make Centricide content. I'll just do it in this other channel. And I haven't really figured out how to, um, how to grok that really. Uh, how do you handle artistic transitions? They feel weird. Are you glad some of your older eras are over? Are there any wish you could come back to? Do you feel trapped by your old art? I definitely don't feel trapped by my old art. Um, I'm glad that I have all the collective knowledge that I've gathered over the years and I can like combine them in interesting ways and do like comparative analysis of like gender frameworks with political frameworks. Um, I'm glad, yes, I'm, I actually am very glad that everything that I've done is over. Like I'd still, I don't wanna, I really don't wanna be talking about mental illness forever. Don't wanna be talking about politics forever. I really didn't wanna be running for mayor forever. Let me tell you, real politics sucks. Um, how much research do you tend to do for some videos? How do you know when you've done enough? Uh, I'd say when I have a strong conclusion, I probably I probably know that I've done enough. I spent an entire day researching the incel versus Chad lore for like the virgin versus Chad lore for for probably over eight hours, um, and I, I basically researched until I developed a decent conclusion, something to make sense of the chaos, right? Um, something to pause it. On creating art that is personal versus creating, or like not even something to pause it, but like something interesting to, an interesting way of like framing it. On creating art personal, that's creating art about a communical, disconnected thing. It's difficult to make your personal art. Hold on, let me check how many comments are left. Oh boy. Oh dearie me. Oh, 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 oh yikes. Um, yeah, we're not gonna finish this today, fellas. But, uh,
Okay, well, thanks, thanks for coming. And uh, we'll, we'll try this again sometime. I'll, I'll remember, I'll remember this, okay? I'll remember.